Hi, this video is a request by Jordan Gold, and Jordan asked me to talk about the curse of dimensionality. If you haven't heard about this curse yet, this is going to be a fascinating topic. Let's start by actually specifying what we are talking about when we say dimensionality. So this curse is all about data, and hence the dimensionality in question is the dimensionality of data sets. That is the same as the number of different variables that are recorded in the data set. You might ask, why does dimensionality matter? And why is it cursed? Well, if you increase the dimensionality of your data set, you run into a surprising amount of problems. Some data analysis methods just stop working. And to understand why they stop working is the first step to fixing this problem. One aspect of the curse is the amount of data that we actually need to understand what is going on. If our system is well described by one dimension, that is really easy. If we think the size of a lake is all that matters, well, we could get an impression of how these lakes are just by going to the largest and the smallest one we can find. You could say a one-dimensional data set has just two corners. Now, if we are interested in two variables, say size and depth, we get four corners. We can go to a large deep lake or a large shallow lake, or a small deep lake or a small shallow lake. If we had one more variable, we already have eight such corners. And for every further one we add, the number of corners doubles. So maybe eight doesn't seem to be a problematic number, but what about 100 variables? The formula is two to the number of dimensions. So for 100 dimensions, we get two to the 100 corners. That is a really large number. So, and what if the number of variables is just 30? 30 dimensions, that gives us two to the 30 corners. Two to the 30 corners, that's about the same as 10 billion. 10 billion, that's still much more than the number of lakes on Earth. See, that's the first aspect of the curse of dimensionality. It's hard to find out what goes on in a high dimensional data set. If there are more than a few dimensions, we can't even look at all the extreme points anymore. There are just so many corners. In most cases, it's even impossible to gather all the data to cover the corners. For example, this is a problem in medical research. You might ask the question, what lifestyle choices increase the risk of heart disease? And sure, it's easy to find some correlation with risk factors. However, if you want to consider all the combinations, you can't really do that because the number of possible combinations among more than a few factors just becomes so great. We are suffering from the curse of dimensionality. Most of the problems caused by the curse can actually be solved by clever data analysis. It is clear that to understand the lakes on Earth, we don't actually need to look at more lakes than exist on Earth, right? So there's ways around that. The key to overcoming the first aspect of the curse is to realize that the actual data that we find in the real world only covers a tiny part of the data space. Of course, we don't expect to find all combinations of the size and depth of lakes in nature. If we plot all combinations, we get a certain shape in the data space, but it doesn't fill the whole space. We call the shape a data manifold, and you can already see that in this example, it has only two corners. Also, the data space in which it lives has four corners. So, there's now only two extreme points to consider. This point is hard to appreciate fully in low dimensional examples. But in high dimensional space, data manifolds are typically incredibly thin. Perhaps think about it like this. If you are a lake expert, and I tell you 10 important stats about a lake I'm thinking of, you can possibly already guess what lake I'm talking about, couldn't you? So this shows you that knowing 10 properties it's sometimes enough to know which specific data point is meant. So, and if this is the case, 10 dimensions are already enough to specify everything. That means the manifold is at most 10 dimensional. The other dimensions are just very flat. A 10 dimensional space is still huge, but it's not astronomically huge. Two to the 10, that's just 1024. So here's a plan. After recording our data, we are going to define new variables that parameterize the data manifold. That means we pick these variables so that they only cover the directions in which the manifold has sufficient variation. 
the directions in which it is sick, leaving out all the directions in which it is thin. These new variables, they can be linear combinations of our original variables, or they could be curved, actually following the data manifold. So, if you know a bit about data analysis, you probably think, hey, great, I can do this with PCA. But if you actually try this in practice on a high-dimensional data set, you'll find that you get really poor results. Because the curve strikes again, and this time in a different way. In a sense, the real issue here is that our low-dimensional intuition that we get from living in a three-dimensional world can be really misleading. So, to make progress, we have to develop high-dimensional intuition, which is easier than it sounds. To gain some intuition, let's consider an abstract example where we distribute our data points randomly in a one-dimensional space. Also, let's now ask how many data points we expect to find at a certain distance d from the origin. If the points are uniformly distributed, we expect the number of points that we find to be proportional to this distance d. Let's see what happens if we do the same in a two-dimensional space. Now we are asking how many data points we find in a circle of radius d. As d increases, the expected number of points still increases. But now it increases quadratically. So, in a one-dimensional space, we can say that the expected number of points that we find up to a distance d increases as d to the 1. In a two-dimensional space, this number increases like d to the 2. So what would happen if you have a 30-dimensional data space? Oh yeah, of course, we expect that the number of points up to a distance d increases like d to the 30. But the function d to the 30 looks like a wall, and this wall stands at the maximal distance that we are willing to consider. That's right, in a high-dimensional data set, almost all data points are at the same distance from each other. That's surprising, but how is it cursed? To understand this aspect, note that we are not good at comparing very dissimilar things. So, for example, it's very easy to compare two lakes I find in my neighborhood, but it's very hard to compare one of these lakes with the Atlantic Ocean. So, these long-distance comparisons are necessarily inaccurate. This is the second way in which the curse strikes. Many data analysis methods consider comparisons between all pairs of points. But in a high-dimensional data set, many, many of these comparisons will be long-range comparisons between points that are very far apart. And these long-range comparisons are inherently very inaccurate. As soon as we have more than 10 dimensions, the noise that comes in from these long-range comparisons typically swarms out all the signal that we would get from the more accurate short-range comparisons. So, if our data set has more than 10 dimensions, the quality of the results from many data analysis methods degrades pretty rapidly. The solution to the second aspect of the curse is to use methods that discard all long-range comparisons and only analyze comparisons between data points that are sufficiently close. But if we do this, the curse of dimensionality actually has one more extra surprise for us. If we use this strategy aggressively and throw out all the long-range comparisons, we will find that in the set of remaining short-range comparisons, some data points appear much more often than others. This means, as we throw out more and more long-distance comparisons, our results start to hinge very strongly on a small set of data points, which in itself can decrease the robustness of the results. But at this point, we have mostly overcome the curse of dimensionality. The uneven importance of data points is a problem, but it doesn't cause major issues in applications. So, I hope you enjoyed this little background on the curse. And if you want to see this in action, if you want to see these principles applied to a real problem with real data that solves an important problem, check out my recent video on diffusion mapping of biodiversity. But first, of course, give this one a like, and if you have also a suggestion for a video, drop it in the comments below. And then, see you next time for more complexity papers.